Hey everybody, my name is Ashre, and in this video I'd like to show you how you can use Prototyper to automate gamepad prototyping in Figma. Let's start with a very simple example. Um, we'll create a prototype from this inventory screen where our user will be able to browse this grid of items. Let's start Prototyper, and by default Prototyper opens in generate mode where it asks you to select two or more component instances to generate a prototype from. So in our inventory prototype, these tiles are all uh, component instances and they have the selected and locked properties. The white tile indicates that it is currently selected and the gray tile is not selected. So in generate mode, Prototyper asks us to select all the component instances. So in this case, the entire grid of tiles. And from there, we simply have to set our properties to uh, the behavior we want. We'd like to navigate this prototype with an Xbox One controller with the D-pad, although it could be other inputs like the left stick and right stick, and the transitions we'd like. We, for, for, this, for this grid, let's stick with an instant transition, but in the next example, we will use other transition types. Um, and finally, here under the swap variant heading, we tell Prototyper what the uh, value or what the name of the selection property is. So in this case, it's selected. We can see that in our tile, it has the selected property. And how Prototyper should manipulate this property to indicate that the component has been selected. So in this case, we're going from no to yes. Um, feel free to adapt this uh, section to whatever your components are in case you're not using a selected property and it's something else. So having configured all of these things, if we click generate, prototype will, Prototyper will create that full prototype for us. If we step into prototype view, we'll see that there are, our prototyping noodles have been linked. And if we run this prototype, we are now able to navigate this grid with our D-pad. Prototyper takes care of making all the intermediate connections. So from any grid, you can go to any adjacent or any tile, you can go to any other adjacent tile. Well, that's awesome. Let's now build a slightly more complicated prototype. Let me remove the noodles here. Great. So in this prototype, we'd like our user to be able to navigate between these three top level tabs and but also navigate the uh, children elements of these tabs much like they could in that inventory prototype we just built so once again let's open prototyper since these are uh, top level screens that have already been designed and laid out laid out in the canvas we switch to the link mode in prototyper where prototyper asks us to select two or more top level frames to link into a prototype. So these are all top level frames because they are contained only within the page and not another frame. Um, if we select all of them, we have the same set of options as before. We'd like to use an Xbox One controller, but instead of a D-pad, let's use shoulder buttons since that's a more common pattern of navigating top level tabs. And we would like to give this a smooth transition. So let's use ease out with uh, 300 milliseconds. When we click link frames, Prototyper creates the prototyping noodles and now these tabs are linked together. From here, all we have to do is generate the uh, navigation, the prototypes for navigating within each of these, uh, within each of these tabs and we will have created our full uh, multi-tab prototype. So. Let's go back in from link to generate mode. We'll use the D-pad with an instant transition to navigate this part of the UI. And we click generate. There we go. It creates the inventory prototype for us, much like before. Um, if we go into the skill tree, we can do the same thing. And I've set up these uh, components to reuse the same selected properties. So here it just works, but Feel free to adjust this if your components use different selected properties um, for different master components. And then finally, we'll select all the codex entries 
and we have successfully achieved uh, complicated prototyping noodles. And when we step into one of these, one of the starting points here, we'll see that we can navigate our inventory, switch tabs, navigate our skill tree, switch tabs, navigate our codex. And you can switch tabs from any selected item. You don't have to be at a specific starting position or a specific position at all. It's completely nonlinear and it just works um, almost as if it was the real thing. So that's been a quick look at Prototyper. Um, and just to drive that point home of just how much it simplifies prototyping, I, I tried building this prototype by hand. It took me a little more than an hour to get all these states. So auto generation like this has huge time saving potential and it'll let you iterate faster, um, explore more designs with less effort. So I really hope you enjoy it. And if you have any problems and you'd like, or if you'd like to give me feedback on Prototyper, feel free to use the help and support button uh, and click report a problem. You'll be able to send me an email with your thoughts. All right, thanks for watching. Have a good one.